Hi writers, today I'm talking about how the number one thing that holds writers back is not skill or talent, it's a matter of self-confidence. Uh, this is the beginning of a short mini series of videos I'm doing to launch my new live class coming in just a week or so. It's called Fiction Writing for Highly Sensitive Creatives. So if you are a highly sensitive person, if you're an INFJ or an INFP, you're an intuitive person, um, or you just are very sensitive to criticism and you have a lot of problems with writing that you feel might be linked to your sensitivity, this is the class for you. We are going to be diving deep into questions like this, the self-confidence questions, the self-esteem questions, those blocks and issues and fears that really hold so many writers back. Uh, so many writers think, you know, I'm not talented enough. I'm not good enough. I need to improve my skills. I need to read more writing guides. I need to get better as a writer. And then the blocks will be released. Then I'll be able to move forward. In this class, we're going to be going really deep into these questions about how it's not so much that you need to improve your skills, although that's always great. That's always a good thing to do. Um, but it's not that you're not good enough. It's that you think you're not good enough. It's one of the most basic writer's fears, and it's so common that so many writers don't see it. So we are going to be looking at these issues, and as we gain more self-awareness around this and how we see that it's not actually our skill level that needs to be improved, it's our mindset, although of course we can always improve our skills, we're gonna come out on the other side with a big energetic shift. Um, we're gonna come out with more confidence than ever before, simply put. I've worked with hundreds of writers who struggle with self-doubt and self-esteem, and I've seen this shift happen. I've worked with clients, I've worked with students. Um, so many have come to me and said, I just need to get better. I just need to be a better writer and then I'll feel better about everything. And then when we work together, we realize that's not actually the problem at all. The problem is the self-confidence. So how do you get that self-confidence? Because you need that self-confidence. You need it to move forward. And moving forward for writers means writing. It also means sharing your writing, submitting your writing, whether you're looking for an agent or you're looking to be published in a magazine, you're looking for some sort of exposure, or you wanna publish on your own. It also means publishing, by the way. Putting your work out into the world. That's what moving forward for writers means. Getting out of paralysis, getting out of that stuck, frozen feeling, that feeling of nothing's happening, I'm not writing at all, or I'm writing a little bit, but I'm ashamed of it, I don't wanna share it with anyone, I don't wanna show anyone, I'm terrified to ever publish it, I'm terrified to even tell people I'm a writer. These are some of the most common problems that highly sensitive creative people struggle with. Um, one of the biggest problems that comes in and that most writers, they don't even know it's a problem that really affects this self-confidence piece we're looking at. Most writers have an unconscious belief that the creative process should be easy. Most writers believe that when they're writing, when they're in the middle of the writing process, they're writing the first draft, they're trying to get it all out, they should feel blissful. They should feel like they're having a lot of fun. It should feel easy, it should feel flowing, like they just sit down and the words pour out of them. Sometimes this happens, like that does happen, that's a thing. I mean, it's great when that happens. And I think so many writers think it should be that way all the time because writing time is hard to come by. So when we get the hour or so that we've been waiting for all week or all month, we've been looking forward to it so much and then we sit down planning to be in a blissful state, planning to have a lot of fun, and then it's not. It's hard or we get stuck or we feel discouraged or we feel overwhelmed by too many ideas or we don't feel like we have enough ideas, um, then we start to feel like something's wrong with us. Then we start to question, I don't think I'm a good writer or I don't think I have what it takes to be a writer because if I was a real writer or I was meant to be a writer or I was a writer who had talent, this process would feel a lot different. This sitting down and writing wouldn't feel so hard, it wouldn't feel so challenging, it would feel blissful. It would feel like I was having a lot of fun and I was just in the zone, I was just, everything was flowing. So we hit these rocky patches, we feel frustrated, we feel discouraged. Um, when we hit these rocky patches, we don't oftentimes realize that the rocky patches are normal. And that's really the problem. We think something's wrong with us for hitting a rocky patch. Well, the rocky patches 
are not only a normal part of the writing process, they're actually a frequent part of the writing process. If you talk to any writer who is very experienced, who's been writing for years, writing successfully, I'm sure if you talk to Stephen King and J.K. Rowling, they would tell you there are tons of times during the writing process, the creative process, where they feel stuck. They feel uncertain. They don't know how to move forward. They feel discouraged. The difference is they trust the process. They know that's a normal part of it, and so it doesn't freak them out. For so many writers who haven't been through it time and time and time and time again, um, it's hard to trust that part of the process. So that's also something we're going to be doing in this class. We're going to be learning how to trust ourselves, learning how to trust our own creative process, and learning how to trust the writing process in general. When we learn tips and strategies to get through these rocky patches, everything changes. And that's when things actually do become easier. That's when the rocky patches are easier to navigate. They don't feel so long. They don't feel so arduous. And we don't feel so alone going through those rocky patches. So the next question I get from writers when I explain all of this, um, it's always, well, if the rocky patches are so hard, if this is a normal part of the pro process and it's going to happen frequently, how do I get through it? How do I keep going? How do I find the stamina and the courage to keep going through the writing process? Because I want to finish a novel. I want to finish a book. I've had this dream of writing a book forever, finishing my book. So how am I going to get to the end if it's going to be hard and I'm going to keep hitting these rocky patches? So the first thing is knowing it's hard. Right? And that's what we just were talking about, we just mentioned previously. Knowing it's hard and knowing there's nothing wrong with you and that it's a normal part of the process, that goes a long way. Um, the next part is connecting to your core passion, connecting to your core purpose. What fuels you as a writer? When you can connect to your core passion and purpose, you can reclaim that energy that's been tied up in self-doubt and fear. And you can get all that energy back. And you can put all that energy back into your creative process. You can redirect it and rechannel it back into the writing where it really needs to be. This is the key because too many writers that I've talked to, um, they don't know why they write. They don't know what they want out of it and they don't know which way to go next. This is a big one. I talk to so many writers who say, I feel lost. I just don't know if I'm going in the right direction at all or which direction I should be going in. I need a little bit of guidance. So if this is you, this is going to be a great class for you. This is going to be a really great fit. Uh, the next video, which is going to be the second video in this series, I'm going to do three. Uh, the next video is going to be the biggest way writers self-sabotage themselves. Um, and it's, it's actually not what you think. Um, we're going to be covering all of this in the class. The fears, the doubts, the really... Um, hidden stuff, the stuff that you know is there and you know you have a blind spot around but you still can't really see it because you are yourself and it's really hard to see your own blind spots, that's the kind of class this is going to be. We're going to talk about writing and the writing process and we're going to talk about questions of craft and questions about marketing and questions about publishing and all that good writing stuff but there's going to be a big emotional component to it and for those of you who have taken classes with me before, you know that's how I operate. I really, really, truly believe that um, there are no shallow problems, right? There are no surface problems that have an easy fix. Whenever you have a big struggle that keeps coming up over and over and over again in your life or your creative life, it's always linked to a lot more things. It's always intertwined with all this stuff going on underneath the surface. So that's the kind of stuff we're going to be diving into in this class. So I will see you guys soon for video two on how writers tend to self-sabotage themselves. Um, if you have questions about the class in between now and then, please email me, writecitysf at gmail.com, or you can drop a comment in the comments box below if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're getting it through my newsletter, you can just hit reply. Um, you can use the contact form on my website. There's a lot of different ways to get a hold of me. So if you're interested in the class, if you have any questions at all about it, times, dates, pricing, material, content, format, what it's going to look like, what's expected of you, please hit me up. I'd love to get the questions answered. I will see you all for video two.